If you think you know everything there is to know about the color tools in Final Cut Pro, spoiler alert, you definitely don't. In this video, we're disabling the LUTs and making true to life color corrections using only the tools native in Final Cut Pro. By the end of this video, you're gonna know some secret adjustments you can make with each of the color tools, plus when to use which one. All right, let's just dive right into it. Now here are some basic rules for color correcting. One, skin tones are king. I'm gonna show you how to tell if you're in range on skin tones. Two, some of Final Cut's tools are great for gross edits in color correction, and some of them are better for fine tune adjustments. And three, each color correction tool has strengths and weaknesses, and I'm gonna point those out as we go along. So here is our first shot. As you can see, it was shot in long but I'm not gonna apply the camera let to this. Let's start from scratch using just the color board. The first thing I would recommend is adjusting your exposure. So let's head on over to the exposure tab and I'm just going to grab these pucks and keeping an eye on my scopes, I'm going to pull down the shadows and pull up the highlights and bring up the mediums a bit, looking at that histogram and coming back to the shadows. If you don't know how to read the scopes, don't worry, I got you. I made a whole video about it that I will put a card to right here and I'll also link to it down in the description. All right, so now that I've got my exposure right, let's head on over to saturation and I'm gonna pump up the global saturation really high and this is looking pretty good. If I wanted to make it a little more vibrant, I would pump up the saturation on the shadows a little bit and on the highlights. Now, if I try to saturate the mid-tones, you'll see that her skin and her lips really start looking saturated. So I'm gonna bring that puck back down. Now, remember, I said that skin tones were king when it comes to color correction. So let's check and see if her skin tones are in range. You wanna make sure you have your vector scope open and this line here enabled, this is your skin tone indicator line. If you're not seeing this, just click this little button and under view, make sure your skin tone indicator is enabled. So I just enable the crop tools and crop right inside the viewer. And typically I like to isolate someone's cheek or their neck. And then let's take a look at that vector scope. It's now just reading the visible portion of my frame. So it's only reading this swath of skin here. And you can see that the waveform in the vector scope is not right in line with that skin tone indicator. It's cheating a little bit more towards the reds than the green. So what that means is we need to bring more green into this shot, but just a little, it's just a little off. So now we're going to reach for the color tab in the color board. And skin tones really fall in the mid-tone range. So we wanna bring the mid-tones a little bit more green. So I'm going to select the mid-tones puck and I'm gonna bring it on this horizontal line down into the green section of our spectrum. So I'm just going to grab this number here, hold down with my mouse, and bring it into the green range. And now I wanna increase the green values in this shot by taking this mid-tone puck and bringing it up while keeping an eye on my scopes. And let me show you a little trick. If you hold down the shift key while you move the puck, you can only move it straight up or down, not side to side. So holding down the shift key, I'm just gonna nudge up this puck until that vector scope waveform is in line with my skin tone indicator. And there we are, perfect. I'm going to hit the reset button and there's a before and after of my color corrected shot. All right, let's move on to our next shot using the color wheels. The color wheels have a different configuration than the color board, but it works pretty much in the same way with the exception of a few extra features. So you see these four wheels, we have the global shadows, midtones, and highlights. The dial on the right adjusts the exposure. The dial on the left is the saturation. And then this center puck adjusts your color values. So just like before, I'm gonna start with my exposures. Let me dial down the shadows and dial up the highlights, keeping an eye on my scopes at all times. Now you'll see that I brought the brightness of my shadows all the way to the bottom of my dial and I brought the highlights all the way to the top and yet I'm not quite maxing out here on my scopes. Here's a secret about the color wheels that you definitely wanna know. I'm gonna double click the top of the inspector window to expand my inspector and then I'm going to reveal all of these different sliders for global shadows, midtones, and highlights. What I wanna show you is that while I've reached the end of the dial here on the shadows, if I use this slider, I can actually bring it even further. So when you're using the color wheels, I wouldn't really reach for these dials here because they are limiting. You're better off expanding all of these sliders 
and using these instead. You'll have better range. Okay, so I've got my exposures here. Let's play with the saturation. I'm gonna crank up the global saturation just to bring some life back into this shot. And then I really wanna bring up the blue in the water. So I'm going to crank up the saturation on the highlights a little bit. And then I do feel like her skin is way too saturated. So let's bring down the mid-tone saturation. And I wanna make that background pop a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the saturation on the shadows. All right, now, generally speaking, I think this shot looks a little warm. So what's different about the color wheels than the color board is that you can change the color temperature using this slider here. So bringing it to the left kind of cools the shot off. All right, now let's focus on her skin tone. I definitely think she looks a little yellow, a little green, but let's confirm that using the crop tools. And so, yes, you can definitely see that it is too green. So I have a couple choices here. I can move this mid-tone puck more toward the reds, or I can use this slider here, the tint slider. If I bring it to the left, it makes everything more green. If I bring it to the right, it brings up the reds. So I'm gonna nudge it just a hair to the right. And I actually think that this waveform is sticking out kind of far in my vector scope for her skin tones. So I'm going to dial down the saturation on the mid-tones a little bit. So we're a little less saturated. Let's reset the crop and check our work. And this shot looks really great. Before we move on to the color adjustments, I've been meaning to ask you, do you guys like this song? Do you like these graphics you see me use in my videos? They are all from the sponsor of today's video, Motion Array. Motion Array is a one-stop shop for Final Cut Pro users like you and me. They have so many templates for Final Cut Pro. You've got text templates from every style. Some of them are really dynamic and some of them are really clean looking. You've got transitions, effects, logo reveals, I mean, anything you could possibly need for your creative projects. And the other thing is that all of these templates are always on trend. So your videos always look fresh. Everyone in my office loves Motion Array. When you're feeling really stuck with the project and you're trying to give it a little extra sizzle, Motion Array always saves the day because they're constantly adding new templates for Final Cut Pro users. And you know that I am an Apple Motion creator and I can totally make these things on my own, but why? These Final Cut Pro templates are gorgeous and easy to use and they just make everything faster. But Motionary doesn't just have templates for Final Cut Pro, they also have a huge music library, stock video, high res graphic elements, and LUTs. If there is one site you need to subscribe to as a creator, it is 1000% Motion Array. I've already made a full tutorial on how to install templates from Motion Array and Final Cut Pro. I will link to that video down below. And if you've never used Motion Array, I'll link to that too. All right, let's keep it going with color adjustments. Here's our next shot, and this one's real tricky. One, we have a mix of natural light and artificial light. Two, we have really saturated colors here. We've got this red ball, and we've got these traffic cones, bright orange. And three, we have two different people, so we have two different skin tones to worry about. For this one, I'm going to use the color adjustments tool to correct it. So let's apply our color adjustments. Of course, as you know, I'm gonna start with my exposures. Let's reach out for the shadows slider and I'm going to dial this down. Now at first glance, I can only bring it down to a value of 100. It seems like the range is very limited. However, if you select these numbers here, hold down your mouse button, you can go all the way down to 200. So there is more range on these sliders than you think. Let's undo that and bring it back down to here. And then let's head on up to our highlights and bring up those highlights. Our colors are still a little dark, so I'm gonna reach for the brightness and give us some lift here. Now, you may be wondering why I don't reach for this slider here, the contrast slider. I don't really care for adding contrast to my shots in this way because you're darkening the shadows and the highlights uniformly. And I like to have a bit more control. So I'll reach for the shadows, the black point, and the highlights and brightness. All right, and of course, I'm gonna dial up my saturation next. And I do think generally the shot looks a little warm. What's great about the color adjustments is that you can adjust the temperature of the highlights, midtones, and shadows independently. This is different from the temperature slider in the color wheels. So I'm just gonna cool off the midtones a little bit and the shadows. And now that I've made these adjustments, I'm looking at my scopes again, and I see I have a little bit more wiggle room in the shadows, and maybe I need to bring the highlights down a little bit. So I'm constantly looking at my exposures as I go. And at this point, I would love to check out my skin tones and see how we're doing. So let me enable the crop tools. Okay, and his skin is right on, but what about this other guy? He's a hair 
pink. So what I'm going to do is split the difference. And again, what's different about the color adjustments is that I can adjust the tints, so that's the green and red values, on the highlights, midtones, and shadows independently. So I'm gonna grab the midtones tint and I'm just gonna nudge that down a hair. Let's reset. So now that I've got everything in range, I do sort of feel like the shot looks dull. I'm gonna pump up the saturation even more and give a little more life to these guys, but look what's happened now. My red ball and my traffic cones are way oversaturated and I can see that they're peaking here in the vector scope. So in this scenario, I'm now going to reach for my hue and saturation curves. Now this can look a little bit intimidating and you can go way too far with these tools really easily. So let me just show you generally how they work. The line we're looking for is the hue versus saturation line. So what that means is that I'm going to be able to select a particular color or range of colors in my video clip and desaturate that section. So what you wanna do is add control points along this spectrum line here. And to add control points, all you have to do is click along the line. And typically if you're trying to isolate a particular color, you would make three different points. Think of it like audio keyframes. So let's say I wanted to desaturate this yellow here. I would make three points along the spectrum line, making sure the yellow range is my center. And then I would grab this center puck and drag it down to desaturate. That's one way to do it, but I don't think it's the most accurate. To delete these points, you just select each one and hit the delete key on your keyboard. The better way to go about this is to use the eyedropper tool. So let me grab the eyedropper and I'm going to select this red ball that automatically has created three control points. Now it's important for you to understand the center point is not the yellow. Think of this as like a continuum. So this is actually my first point. The red here is my second point and the orange is my third point. So I'm just going to dial down the reds just a hair. If you go too far with it, you start affecting skin tones and stuff like that. So we're just gonna nudge this down a little bit. We're not gonna apply any of the other curves to this clip, but they all work the same way, the hue versus hue allows you to select a color in your frame and change the hue of just that color. Hue versus Luma allows you to select a color and adjust the brightness of just that color. Luma versus saturation allows you to select a particular brightness value in your shot and adjust the saturation of that. So you could saturate or desaturate, let's say just the highlights or the shadows. Saturation versus saturation allows you to pick values of a certain saturation in your clip and either make them more or less saturated. And orange versus saturation is really for saturating and desaturating skin tones, but you can also drop down here and select other ranges as well. So this shot looks pretty true to life, but I think it could use a little more oomph. So what I'm going to do is now apply the color curves. Just like with the hue and saturation curves, you can add control points along these lines. If you wanna affect the shadows, you're gonna add control points more toward the bottom of this line. If you wanna impact the highlights, you would make control points up at the high point, and then obviously the mids are in the center range here. The first curve is on the luma, so this would allow you to add contrast to your shot. So if I added a control point here just by clicking on this line, I could boost up my highlights a little bit. If I wanted to bring down my shadows a little more, I could add a control point and drag this down. You can also grab the first and last point and make adjustments as well. Now, when you make control points along the red, green, and blue lines, you are boosting the red values, let's say in the highlights, if we make a control point here. So I'm gonna bring down the reds in the top highlights, but bring back in some red a little bit in these other values. And let's bring down the reds in the shadows. Let's boost the greens a little in the lower mid ranges, bring them down in the shadows a hair, and then let's make a control point on the blues right in the center and just bring up the blues overall. And then I'm just gonna dial down the mix on this a little bit. I always love to work backward and see how we progressed. So this is the original shot. Here's when we added our color adjustments. Here's when we brought down the saturation of that ball and those traffic cones. And then here's where we added a little something extra stylistically to our shot. So like I said before, different tools have different strengths and weaknesses. I'm gonna show you how I would color correct this shot from start to finish using 
a lot of the different tools. So this is just the way I like to do it. You might like to do it differently. I like to start in the color board and make some quick adjustments to my exposure and add a little contrast using these pucks. I just think they're so easy to use. And I also like to pump up the saturation a bit here in the color board too. Then I like to reach for the color wheels and adjust the temperature a little bit. Then I like to apply the color adjustments and make more adjustments to the shadows and the highlights here. And I'm gonna pump up the saturation more on the color adjustments too. Okay, now it's time for me to check the skin tones. So she is dead on. Let's check out Bianca. Bianca's a little pink. So in the mid-tones tint, I'm just gonna split the difference and bring that down here on the color adjustments. I'm gonna make the shadows a little cooler on this. And I think this shot looks really pretty. If I wanted to go the extra mile, I would apply the hue saturation curves. Maybe we could make these blue pillows pop a little bit more. And if I was really feeling extra, maybe I would apply the color curves and make a few tiny, tiny adjustments. And again, I love to work backward and see how far we've come with our color correction. This is quite the transformation. I hope this video helped you feel more comfortable and confident using the color tools in Final Cut Pro. If you guys wanna see a tutorial about how I use LUTs, let me know down in the comments. In the meantime, here's some other videos I know you're gonna love. Thanks to everyone who watches all the way to the end. I'll see you again.